This is Dan. He's an amateur driver tackling the circuit and he's got a coach guiding him through every corner. But the coach isn't human, it's AI. You braked around 15 meters too late for that last corner. Make sure to brake earlier next lap. The voice in Dan's ear is actually Trophy.ai, an AI driver coach giving real-time feedback that's specifically for his driving style. It's incredible technology, but the team's bigger vision is to transform how Formula One, other sports, and even broader skill-based things like flying a plane are trained and assessed. The idea is in 10 years, no matter what activity you're doing, whether that is uh, driving a race car, but also swinging a golf club, to something more like industrial, Industrial, like uh, working on a manufacturing line, you'll have a AI coach that can speak to you and talk to you and make you the best version of yourself for whatever that activity is. That's Mike Winter, CEO of Trophy.ai, and he, along with his team of 25, are driving for a future where every skill can be optimized, personalized, and improved with the help of AI. So I tried out this technology in a simulator and on a real track to see if it's likely to train the Formula One champions of the future. Now, I'm fully confident of my speed on the real race circuit, and while I'm solid in the sim, I'm definitely not at the professional level. So I'm gonna jump in, see what feedback I get, and most importantly, see if I become any quicker. Now, I also wanna mention that Trophy's AI is called Mansell. Not after Nigel, but after me. I actually co-founded the company back in 2020, and it's incredible to see how far we've come. So far, in fact, that the AI now trains me. So let's go out and see how Mansell gives me feedback in this. This is the Porsche Cayman that I'm driving at Donington Park, and this is the car and the circuit that we're gonna be driving in the real world in a couple of weeks. The AI needs a little bit of time to analyze your driving style before it starts offering advice. But even after just one lap, the coaching begins. Try staying in fourth gear at the apex to carry more speed through this right-hander. So the right-hander means the old hairpin here. Okay, not too bad. Focus on braking 25 meters later and increasing your peak brake pressure by 50% to optimize your entry into this tightening right. Okay, so my braking was nowhere near on the previous lap. That's really good feedback. And obviously as we do more and more laps, it hones in on what your kind of consistent pace should be like. And the AI keeps getting sharper with every single lap. Quickly locking onto your consistent pace and the highest priority areas where I could improve. Bit of a slow entry there. Focus on adjusting your trail braking as it's key to improving your average corner speed here. Yeah, so what that was telling me was that if I trail brake for a little bit longer, it holds the nose down and allows me to go into the corner a bit quicker. And it worked. That's actually the first time that I've driven with this new version of Trophy AI. And it is, honestly, it's incredible. Um, so much so that I forgot that it was AI. It felt like a normal driver coach. There was a lot to think about on there. Um, but the details that it gave me in terms of how long I should be keeping the brakes on, whether that needs refinement or smoothing out, and where I'm getting on the brakes, whether that's too late or too early, just very quickly got me up to speed. So how does all of this work? Well, in short, data and lots of it. Our drivers have driven over 50 million laps now with Trophy and that's really allowed our AI to learn the specifics of how different people learn to get better and what types of advice are gonna be most effective to deliver to what drivers. That's Dr. Kyle Nickerson, senior data scientist at Trophy, who led the development of this AI driver coach. But it's not just the sheer numbers of laps that's impressive, it's the AI's deep understanding of every detail of a driver's style. We have almost one trillion data points from drivers. Um, and that's everything from when they applied the brake to how they like use the steering wheel um, on the car. And our AI has been trained on those points. And that allows us to get really in-depth and advanced on their driving style, their techniques, what they're doing right and what they're doing wrong. And this is where AI has a clear advantage over human coaches. It can process an extraordinary amount of data, far more than any human could handle. And the feedback from Trophy, even to me as a coach, 
feels natural. It's practical advice that I can actually use. And that's because the team have studied how top coaches work to design their AI. A large part of our AI it was fueled by working with expert coaches. So from that, we were able to learn a lot of what a coach thinks about when they're coaching somebody, what data points they look for, and we were able to use that as sort of the starting point for our AI. So the AI has vast amount of data. It's learned from the top coaches, but how does it gauge a specific driver's skill level and then determine what they should focus on next? We're able to use something called unsupervised learning or clustering to basically group similar drivers together. Because our AI has seen so many laps, we're able to actually start partitioning people into different driver styles to basically learn that some drivers at each skill level are going to be maybe more aggressive or less aggressive in different sort of traits of drivers. And this is key. When I coached drivers full time, I found that this tailored approach made all the difference. The goal of a coach is to assess the driver's level quickly, prioritize what needs improvement and focus on the next steps that they should work on. Because if you try to teach a beginner pro level techniques, they won't be able to apply it. Learning has to be step by step, working on what's next, not everything at once. Delivering the right feedback at the right moment while the driver is fully focused on driving is challenging not just for a human coach but also for trophies AI so our AI is essentially constantly monitoring your telemetry while you drive and the first thing that it has to decide is when to speak so we need to decide if this upcoming corner is maybe something you're struggling at uh, maybe looking at your past few laps uh, you haven't been nailing it too well so when to speak is sort of the first challenge uh, and then what to say is of course the second challenge the what is all about prioritizing there could be a list of 20 tweaks that the driver could make to be faster but which one or two changes will have the biggest impact well the team designed the ai to approach this problem like a real world coach one thing we find is that when we're delivering coaching on track, a big part of it is being succinct and being sure to deliver the feedback at a time when it's not going to distract the driver. The speed of delivery is also critical. Drivers need feedback instantly, right in the moment. And there's a lot happening behind the scenes. The AI has to assess how the driver is performing, translate that into actionable advice, generate the feedback and deliver it back to the driver, all at the perfect time. Oh, and the communication isn't just one one way. The driver can also ask the AI questions. We ended up compiling our own sort of uh, speech model for when you speak to Mansell because um, that ended up being one of the the more difficult challenges is, is speaking to this coach and being able to process you know, that voice in time, uh, send that information off and, uh, and get a coherent response back in, in real time. Now it's time to try the AI on a real race circuit. This is Dan, who you met at the start of this video. Dan's quick in the sim, but hasn't spent much time on a real racetrack. And he's never driven anything as quick as his Porsche. But before he could hit the track, I had some prep work to do. So the first thing we need to do today is to actually go out and set some laps so that we can train the AI, which can then explain to Dan where he's losing the most time, how he can improve on track. And the only reason we're having to give it training data is because this is the first time that we've ever done this in the real world. We're hooked in to all of the data in this Porsche, pulling all of that data, understanding my laps, and then feeding that back to Dan as he's driving out on the track doing his laps. I put in about 20 consistent laps to give the AI enough data to analyze. With that done, the AI was trained and ready to help Dan improve. So Dan headed out onto the circuit, armed with real-time coaching from the AI. For Red Game, try to get on the throttle about 10 meters earlier to carry more exit speed. Right, so let's try just a bit more throttle on corner exit for Red Gate. Nice and late. Trail off, get to the apex. Full throttle. Whoa, okay. A bit too much. You're trail braking too much and over slowing the car into coppice. Try to release the brakes a bit faster this time. That's what you'd say, but trail brake less. Trail braking too much. To come off. Now, right. Keep it flat now, keep it flat, keep it flat, keep it flat. Yeah, a lot of time there. It was all going very well, but then Dan got a little bit too confident. You 
braked around 15 meters too late for that last corner. Make sure to brake earlier next lap. Right, so Mansell said that was a bit too late that time. So next lap we're going to brake a little bit earlier. What kind of advice was it giving you? First off, like starting to look at the high level stuff. So it was telling me to brake a little bit later. It was telling me to um, turn in a little bit earlier, turn in a little bit later, throttle, things like that. And then it started to go a little bit further down into trail braking. By trail braking, I needed to adjust a little bit. I was trail braking too much. Yeah, so it started off at that high level, then just gradually got into more granular detail. But Trophy AI isn't just about life coaching. Like a human coach, it also helps you refine your technique between sessions. Okay, so we're in between sessions now. This is normally where a driver coach would sit down with you, look at the data, look at the video, understand what's going on, ask you a few questions about your driving, and then offer up some advice for your following session. But we're not gonna use me today. <laughs> we're gonna use Trophy AI. And uh, yeah, I, I guess ask it your initial question. Yep. Uh, hey Mansell, can you give me some feedback on my last session? I think it was good. Uh, the braking I didn't feel was quite right. I think it could have been better. Um, so what was my braking like overall? Generally could be braking a little bit later, particularly going into the final chicane. Your peak pressure around the major braking zones is really good, but you're keeping the brakes on too long going into McLean's, and this is affecting your entry speed. To find some more lap time, try releasing the brakes a little earlier into the corner. <laughs> Man. So when I looked at your data, I saw that that peak pressure where you're doing the majority of the braking was actually really good. You were quite close to me, very close to me, uh, but you were then over slowing the car just going in into the corner there at McLean's. And so, yeah, Mansell AI has picked up on that and is offering you the advice. So Mansell, what corner would you say I could gain the most time on? You gain the most time into coppice, you're losing about six tenths of a second. Most of this is you're braking too early, but also you're not using enough throttle on exit. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, I saw that as well. When I was looking at the delta time on the data, coppice was the biggest loss. Coppice is that corner where you go up the hill, turn right, you can't see the apex. It's one of the, probably the most challenging corner on the entire circuit, which is probably why you're struggling a little bit there. The tendency is to break too early there because you can't see the apex. So you're losing a chunk of time there. So Dan headed back out to put the AI's advice into practice. And I was watching from the sidelines and I could see his confidence and the speed building every single lap. The car looked stable and he was hitting all of the right marks. So will future Formula One world champions be coached and assessed by AI? Well, I might be a little bit biased, but I absolutely think so. And more importantly, it will allow everyone to have access to the best coaching in the world, which, especially in motorsport, hasn't been available before. So what do you think? Will the next generation of F1 drivers be coached by AI? If you'd like to try out trophy.ai, get coaching by Mansell AI, and try and beat some of my laps, check out the link below. Thank you very much for watching. And if you're into sim racing, check out this video I made about how Max Verstappen is world-class in the sim. Thanks and see you next time.